I'm going to start this card off by doing a little colouring on my front panel. So I've already got some glycerin on my blending tool. So this is white. And I'm going to go in with some silver stars too. The base of this file, and you hopefully can see it possibly a little bit in this light, I have on here, I have a diagram of my circuit. Now, if you were going to do this yourself, you might want to do it in pen lines. I do it in score lines because A, I can, and B, I can see them quite easily. And I have a little mark there for my battery. Because this is going to be a lighting up card, but not only is it lighting up, it's going to have three bulbs. And it's not going to be permanently lit up. It's going to be a slider so that when you move the switch backwards and forwards, the lights light up and go off. Now this tape has not only got adhesive backing, but it has a conductive adhesive backing. So you don't have to worry about it too much. If you break a circuit, you can generally mend it. Now at the moment, I don't have the positive line put in. That will come later. The battery will go on top of this and then I'll be putting another piece of tape along here and under these lines, but there will be a gap there. But for the moment, I want to make the gaps for where I put my lights and that's where these little pencil marks come in. If I zoom in a bit more, there we go. So narrow slit and remove the bit of tape. I find that is the easiest way to get a consistent gap in the circuit that you can put your lights on. There we are. So as I said, the last bit of tape I need has to be long enough to go down there. It's a little bit extra and over there. So I think that will do the trick. Now it's my particular habit normally to double over the last bit of tape. And I do that because if I'm using a test battery, I don't want to stick my tape to the battery, even though the adhesive is a conductive one. If I stick it there, I then got to pull it off and there's a chance I might break it, which I don't really want to do. So if I double it over, I'm not going to be in risk of it sticking where I don't want it to stay. So it goes all the way down to here. Then when I get to the level of this line, turn it around bring it back on itself, press it down and then put it so that there is a little gap between the tape and the other three lines. There is a little line along that way to guide me. And that's where my switch is going to go. There we are. Now the next thing to do is to put the little lights in. Now if you have chibi lights, fine, that's not a problem. If you don't, if you have something like this, fairy lights for a tree, you can cut these off of the string and use them individually. You can actually use them if you don't want to do a circuit like this. You can actually use them in strips of, say, three lights. 
and just curl up the wires in between. You can use this sort of thing, which I stripped out of a strip light, would you believe? Fancy that. I've got this variety as well, which is a multicolour one again, coming out of a strip light. And I have these which are off of a string like this, only I've actually cut them down already. And you can get them in various different colours. Now one thing to be aware of is a lot of the lights, including these, have actually got a microscopic circuit inside which makes them blink or makes the colour change or whatever. And sometimes if you're using these sorts of lights, you'll be looking at your circuit and you'll be thinking, yes, that should be working and it's not coming on. And that's because the circuitry in here is actually telling it to not switch on. And it won't switch on until it's decided that's when it should switch on. So you have to be aware that if you're buying these lights, be aware of what you're buying. If you're buying a strip of lights which are permanently on all the time and don't have any other option, then they will work in the same way on your project. But if they are designed to blink, they might well blink on here as well and not necessarily in the way that you want. Just be aware of that. So, what I have to do now is to put my lights on and to do that I need to prepare them. Now if you have a light which comes off of a strip, they will frequently have two wires on either side and you only want two of these wires so two of them can be trimmed off. But if you were to just put this onto a battery it wouldn't actually light anything up unless it's been prepared. This one has been prepared. And the way it's been prepared is I have actually taken a nail file, a piece of foam and a nail file, and I've just gone like this, turning it over a few times because these wires have a coating on. If they didn't, the lights would short out all the time when they were in use. So I can take a pair of wire cutters, which I have here, and I can snip off the other two wires quite close. I'm going to put my finger over them so the wires don't spring and fly all over the place. It's nothing like standing in bare feet on a bit of wire. So I now have my prepared light bulb and I can find out which is the positive and which is the negative side. Now on a battery, the positive side is very helpfully marked with a cross. And you put one wire, one side of the battery, the other wire, the other side, and you wait for it to light up. Now when it's lit up, you know that the one touching the plus side on here is the positive wire. And quite often what I'll do is I will just put a little bend in that wire so that I know that is the positive wire and that's the negative because I need to know that when I put it on my card. So to put this type of thing on the card what you do is you put the negative wire to the negative side and the positive to the positive side. Now anything that comes down from underneath the battery before the line is broken is negative. So this one here, that side is negative. This bit, which will eventually join onto the lower strip, which goes up here and over the top of the battery and onto the positive side, is the positive side of the battery. So in theory, if I put that there and that there and press that, it lights up. Now, of course it doesn't because there's a break in the circuit. I'm just going to zoom out. There we go. Because there is a break in the circuit, so you need something to connect it. When you do that, the light comes on. See? Simple. It's not difficult at all. Now you can use normal sticky tape to tape that down. Or if you're being particularly cautious, and I tend to be erring on the side of caution when it comes to electrical circuits, 
because you have this nasty little habit of not working if you don't do things quite right. I'm going to take another piece of the conductive copper tape to stick my wire on there. Now I need to put the bulb over the hole that I need it to shine through. So I've just moved it. You can bend it around as you wish. And put some tape over that one. So now if I get a piece of tape on my finger and do that, holding battery, it will light up. Okay, so that one is working quite nicely. When it comes to these, you have to decide which is the positive and which is the negative side with a little less help. But on this particular one, there is kind of very light design. And I know, because I've tested it, which side is the positive and which is the negative. And it will be the same on each and every one of them. When it comes to this type, there's nothing to tell you whether it's positive on one side or negative. And the only thing you can do is have a look at the back. And you can see there's more metal on one side of this than there is on the other. Note which side you're putting down. And if I put this one here, for example, and take my tape. No, that's not coming on. So the one that I've got stuck to that side at the moment must be the negative rather than the positive, because if it was a positive one, it would be lit up. So I need to test whether I've actually done anything with these other lights and then I can put them on. I can't remember if I put them or not. No, that one doesn't look trapped. As I said, I tend to do this with a nail file. If I'm feeling really lazy, I will get my electric nail file, my e-file out, and I'll do it with that. It's very quick doing it with that, I can tell you. But I do realise that most people don't have e-files to have. That's definitely working. That's a green one. Because I've got these in different colours, by the way. <laughs> in case you haven't guessed. Right, just check in. Yeah, this side is the positive one. So again, I'm going to give that a little bend. Just so I know which is which. So I'm putting the last light on. I've already tested which way round it should be. And in this particular case, I'm just going to use normal sticky tape to stick it down. Like that. Like that. And test it. There we are. They're all working. So if you slide a switch along there, that's what they're going to do. The next step is to close up the card. And before you do that, you want to put some sticky tape over the battery to keep it in place because you don't want your battery falling off, because that really wouldn't do your chances of your card working much good. Right, so those are working. Now, because I have a CR2016, it's actually quite a thin battery thing. 
I can actually get away without putting foam tape on here. You can just about get away with it. So I can actually close this up with normal double sided tape. But first of all, I need to actually make my switch. Now the file is included in with this video, a link is included to the file. And in there you will find a thing for this switch. And basically what you want to do is take a piece of sticky tape, double-sided tape, and put it on one side like that. And it can be folded up. Now you want a long edge and then you want a piece that sticks up and then you fold the other long edge around. So you have this which will stick out of the card and a flat edge. The flat edge you want to cover with a piece of copper tape. I'm going to use the piece that I haven't been messing around. Now this copper tape happens to be my old wider one, which is fine for doing this, but it just doesn't have the um, conductive adhesive, but that doesn't matter when it comes to making the switch here. So, in theory, this switch goes through this slider here. This gets attached there, and then as it goes side to side, the lights light up. Now what you do need to do is make sure that you only put a very thin strip of adhesive tape around the outside because you don't want anything to come into contact with that that's going to stop it from working. And you need to make sure that you actually put the switch in the car because, keep it quiet, I've been known to make the card and find the switch on the table afterwards. Not good. I've said a few naughty words after doing that. So I would add a greeting to that one and then that would be my card finished. Just mount it on a base and you're done. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye bye.